This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Cassandra. I'm 22 years old. I do consider myself an addict, and I, I would consider myself addicted to Roxy's. When you smoke, it's like a body high. It relaxes you. It calms you down. When Cassie's high, she's just kind of out there. There's no emotion. There's no. There's no nothing. It's almost like, you know, you can look right through her. You know, I speedball a lot with coke and the pills. And, like, I do come across times where my heart just hurts really bad. You know, I usually take it easy when that happens, like, slow down for a little bit before I pick up again. She will steal and lie and deceive and whatever she needs to do to get that money for those drugs. Cassie's gotten herself into a bunch of legal trouble. The last time I picked her up at jail, which was about a month and a half ago, she was hysterical laughing like it was a big joke. Cassie was a gorgeous little girl. She was always smiling and laughing. She was a very happy little girl. She was very bright. I thought it was just so cool that I had this um, little Korean daughter. The situation was not good because Cassie's mom was an 18-year-old girl. She decided that she couldn't handle her new baby. I missed her a lot. I was always, I always thought about her. I always had pictures of her. Dominic didn't even pay any attention to that. He was more concerned over what was happening in his personal life rather with his daughter's life. When they came to part of another woman coming into Dominic's life, Cassie would be pushed aside in a second. And if Cassie needed attention or Cassie needed something, it was here's $50, go, to, go shopping. Growing up, I always wanted my dad's attention, but he partied a lot, like went out with his friends a lot. He never brought her to a circus or brought her to a, a movie or spent quality time with her other than buying her things. Cassie was more or less thrown out to the wolves. She kind of started hanging out with the wrong people. My wife suggested we send Cassie to a boarding school. I had agreed to do that because I figured it would get her back academically and discipline her. I yelled and screamed and told him, how dare you do this to your daughter? She doesn't need camps, she needs you. We were out in the middle of the wilderness. There was a lot of scorpions and tarantulas that came into the room. When you got in trouble, you had to eat with your hands, and the people were really mean there. I was not allowed to have any contact with her. I was able to write her. All the letters were reviewed before they were given to Cassie. I was miserable. I was very depressed when I was there. That was a lot worse than the school in Costa Rica. That pretty much turned out to be like a prison where she was at. It wasn't the place I thought it was. We were treated horrible. You were treated like, you know, like an animal, basically. We ate with our hands, slept outside. I would um, get a phone call from a counselor once a month. They said, Cassie's okay, doing great. She just got a, an A on a test. I was angry at my dad for, like, sending me away to a place like that and not doing his full research. And Every one of them were young girls and young boys. And it was a horrible thing. It was really hard on me when I got back. I was scared to, you know, be around people and have to live with other people again because I didn't want to, I didn't want to go through the same thing I just got away from. Being sent away really, really damaged her emotionally. I don't think I'll ever gain a trust for anyone back again. Because if I feel like if my own family betrayed me and left me and didn't even care, why would some random person care? I loved how it made me feel. 
Like, it was just, like, an amazing high, like, something I never felt before. Cassie was doing more drugs, and she was hanging out with this guy that she was with. I loved being a mom. I mean, especially when I held my son, because I knew that I had somebody who was always going to love me, you know, no matter what I did wrong. I was so proud of her. I even said, Cassie, your face is cleared up. You look beautiful again. You got sparkle in your eyes. And she said, Grandma, I'm not doing anything wrong now. I want to protect my baby. Once Travis was out of Cassie's life, she just started using heavier and heavier. She's been bouncing around like crazy. I find it very difficult to even find out where she, what town she's in lately. It's very, very sad. It breaks my heart. Of course, I love my son. I love him more than anybody. But, I mean, I can't control my addiction. It controls me. How do you get the money to get the pills that you need? Um... Um... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hustle, basically. I pray to God she has not done any escorting. I pray to God she hasn't. It would, it, it would devastate me. I do feel trapped by my addiction, but I feel like you live or die, and if you die, it's just your time to go. I don't fear death at all. I don't fear anybody. It hurts me seeing her destroy her life. I think there's a good chance Travis may never know his mom, just for the sole reason. If she does not get help soon, she's going to be dead, or she's going to wind up in jail. Come on, you guys, sit down. You can sit there and say you care and you're my family. F all of you. I'd rather see my mother in this room. You looked me dead in the eye and told me this was an intervention. You swore. You lie to me every day. That's OK, though, right? Just sit down for a minute. I'm not sitting down. Get these cameras away. Maybe I'll think about it. All right, guys, let, let's sh shut the cameras out. It might no, change they're things. They're not my family. Yes, they're they not are. my family. Get the out. Look at this place. I don't do yeah, look at it. Look at, Chile, look at Costa Rica, too. I'll go with you. They're sending me to the place right down the road, right oh. here. I'm going, too. That's where I'm going. California, baby. Ready Ford well, Clinic. That's where I'm going. This is the beginning. This is trauma therapy. This is a beautiful place. This... Leave me alone. It's my stuff. I just thought about it the past few days. And even if I at least do it, like, try it out for a few months, you know? I'm 62 days clean. You know, I'm laughing, I'm giggling a lot. I'm having so much fun here. And I never thought I would say that I'm having fun in recovery. But my son, you know, I just want to make things right and be a, a mother that he deserves to have in his life. My future looks excellent right now. Um, I'm grateful to know that I don't have to pick up a drug anymore. I don't have to rely on a little pill I've learned just to forgive those people who hurt me, and so today I'm not a bitch. <laughs> That's not who I am today. 